Oh, here. Thank you. I would have forgotten to start a recording for sure. So thank you for starting the recording. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are in the world. Uh, this is the session for the RDA WDS World Data Systems WDS is Certification of Digital Repositories Interest Group. And our session today is on trust principles and challenges on implementation. Uh, so here in this interest group, we've talked all about, about certification of digital repositories around data repositories, making repositories trustworthy places to store data. Uh, good tagline maybe is for, for fair data, we need trustworthy repositories. And so that's what we'll be talking about. This is uh, interest group has been around for several years now and uh, is a place where the discussions around creating the core trust seal certification began. So that's, if that's what you're interested in hearing about, you are in the right place. So sessions being recorded. We just heard all that. Uh, a couple of housekeeping other things associating that. You know, please mute yourself. When you're not talking, turn off your video to save people's bandwidth. Um, the chat is open. Please feel free to put the questions and clarification things in the chat. Uh, we'll have plenty of discussion time where people can raise their hands and talk in person as well. Uh, and please, you know, please do. Please do engage in, in this session. <clears throat> throughout. Uh, collaborative notes doc, we put the notes doc uh, link into the chat a few times. So uh, please put your name in as a participant there and please put in notes. So notes are gonna be for not just for us co-chairs, but for, for all of us. And we'll just use the RDA plenary Twitter hash code if you don't wanna uh, Twitter hash, if you want to uh, tweet about our session, that would be fantastic as well. Uh, I should have, should have said we should introduce ourselves, uh, at least the two current uh, co-chairs. I'm Jonathan Petters. I work at Virginia Tech University Libraries in the States. I'm one of the co-chairs of this group. Uh, Dawei, would you want to quick introduce yourself? Yeah, this is Dawei Lin. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm from uh, NAAD, NAAH, uh, and I'm happy to work with uh, uh, Jonathan, like John, uh, to, to uh, work on this session. Great, great, fantastic. All right, so let's continue moving along. So we've got the housekeeping taken care of. So what are we here to talk about today? Uh, so here's the meeting objectives uh, as a, as a uh, broad view. Continue discussions on the overview and recommendations for effective implementation of certification of digital repositories. The reason for the interest group to be, uh, for being. Uh, for this plenary, we'll talk, we'll talk and focus more on current questions and, uh, and towards implementation of uh, the trust principles, which you may or may not have heard, we'll introduce the trust principles here and uh, talking about towards building a trustworthy repository ecosystem. <clears throat> so uh, a couple more sub bullets on this. First, we'll we're actually talk about uh, the trust principles, introduce them and talk a little bit about how the trust principles might might be related to other things that are important in the in the data sharing and research data sharing area so other principles frameworks like the fair principles and the care principles if you've heard of these we have established repository certification processes we have metrics for how to say whether a repository is good or not we have things that have already been established how does the trust principles how do the trust principles uh, uh, relate to these things. So we're going to hear from uh, we're going to hear from from Vim Hugo at Don's a little bit about how we might start thinking about relating these things together. Then we're also going to hear from three digital repository certification representatives uh, from the certification body bodies: Nestor, Cortra Seal, and uh, the ISO standard 16363. Uh, talk about their processes a little bit. So introduce them. So if you're new to this, you'll hear a little introduction about about these processes and then how they're also seeing themselves currently as related to the, the trust principles that have come out. And then at the end of this session, we're going to talk more about uh, are there are there reasons to do some more formal formal discussion and formal work around how to, how are all these things related? How are the trust principles related to these things? Uh, uh, well, so that's what we're going to talk about. An important thing to note here is there's a related birds of feather session uh, in uh, on November 10th. Uh, at 1600 UTC, that's gonna we're gonna have these discussions continue. Talk more about how the, these different principles frameworks are are, are related and uh, and more around the work that we might want to start doing around it. So we'll we'll repeat that a few times because the discussions will continue next week. <clears throat> okay, so introduction and welcome. That's what I'm doing right now. Uh, we're gonna hear some presentations. We have 
we recorded most of our presentations to try and keep on time. Uh, not quite all of them, but almost all of them. So we'll hear a little bit about the trust principles. We'll do that right next um, and where they are. And uh, then we'll hear from Vim Hugo on, on clarifying the relationships between the trust principles and other frameworks and certification processes. We'll then hear pr perspectives of certification bodies on the trust principles. We'll leave a little time after those, after all of our presentations, we'll leave a little time for discussion, clarification questions, people who are new, maybe they have questions on the certification processes, leave a little time for discussion on this. And then we'll move into a wider discussion around this idea of maybe having a, a trust principles implementation working group. And then we'll wrap up. That's what we got on plan. So now here I'm going to be uh, required to do a quick shuffling around of uh, platforms to share appropriate things. And I'll probably make a mistake here and there, but please bear with me. I went through it all this morning. But uh, so we're going to switch to a recording that Dawei made for uh, on the trust principles through first. So let me stop sharing and we'll try and start sharing the correct things. I'm going to mute myself and I'm going to start playing Dawei's recording. Move to the next one. All right, here we go. The goal of trust principles is to ensure that the repositories should serve the user's need long term. In the past decades, especially in space and the social sciences, there has been excellent work to improve the quality or the trustworthiness of the repositories. However, many of them are not well known and easy to understand. Trust principles want to change that through a concise, straightforward message. However, trust principles does not replace any standards, criteria, or best practices. Instead, trust provides a high level starting point for advocating, supporting, or implementing certifications for the mature repositories or assessment for all repositories. Trust is an acronym of five principles. T for transparency is the foundation of the trust. Without transparency, there is no trust. Transparency provides public and verifiable evidence of the services of a repository. The examples are terms of use, preservation time frame, or the service capacity. And R for responsibility is the actions to fulfill the commitment to ensure the authenticity and the integrity of the data holdings. The activities include providing reliable and persistent services, adhering to metadata standards, providing an interface to download data, protecting the data's uh, sensitivity. And U for user focus is to put the user in the center of the operation. It focuses on user by monitoring and identifying involving community expectations and response to meet these changing needs. S for sustainability is to sustain services and preserve data holdings for the long term. The approaches may include planning for the risk mitigation, securing funding support, or providing governance for preservation. And T for technology is to provide infrastructure and capabilities to support secure, persistent, and reliable services. Trust Principles has been a community effort and the RDA for the last two years. As a result, the community has a growing interest in recognizing and adopting trust for policy development and the funding opportunities for repositories. Trust has received 41 endorsements from funders, repositories, publishers, and professional societies. The trust paper in Nature Scientific Data 2020 generated uh, 19,000 views and 60 citations, and such attention demonstrates the potential impact of trust in the data uh, repository ecosystem. Trust principles are gaining momentum but it is still a long way to achieve its goal to build a robust repository ecosystem. And here are a few challenges. Firstly, although certification standards existed and are considered as the implementations of trust principles, 
they are mainly pursued by domain specific and mature repositories. Generalized repositories and young repositories are often out of scope for certifications. And secondly, we need more certified repositories as the role models to influence culture change of building trust as the DNA of the repository operation. And thirdly, the general language in the principles allow multiple overlaps and redundant implementation approaches. And last but not least, trust principles cannot make impact alone. It needs to work with all stakeholders and evolve with the different expectations. On the roadmap, we are at the stage of actively engaging with the community and exploring ways to implement and improve trust. The questions we propose to discuss at this session and a related bird of feather session on November 10th are, what are your challenges? What does it take to implement trust? If there's enough interest and concrete problems to form a working group of trust implementations. This presentation benefited from bi-weekly calls with the colleagues on the slide. I want to express my gratitude, particularly to Dr. John Westbrook for his enormous contributions to trust principles as an early developer, a co-author, and an enthusiastic member of the data repository community. Rest in peace, John. All right, so that's, that's our introduction to the trust principles here. Thank you very much, Dalwe. Uh, so what we'll do now is we'll move into a presentation by, by Ben Hugo Dons to talk about how these trust principles might be related to other things. So let me do some more fancy dancy switching. Shuffling around here. Oh, that's not right. I already played number two, number three. Sure, let me share this. Got it. All right, here we go. One, my name is Wim Hugo. I'm the Chief Technology Officer of Dance in the Netherlands. And today I'll be talking about ideas around formalization of uh, the specific reference to trust. Um, ever since the creation of the FAIR principles and then sometime after that the trust principles, we have become aware over a, a wide variety of disciplines of a diverse landscape that uh, includes sets of principles such as trust and fair and potentially in future uh, care focused on uh, the ethics of, of research together with various frameworks and authorities uh, of very, at various levels of formality that look at providing criteria for these principles and then benchmarks and best practices and measurements for determining the extent to which people comply with these sets of principles. So these uh, benchmarks and uh, guidance type information of course existed for a long time prior to the creation of FAIR and Trust, but uh, FAIR especially has brought this into the mainstream uh, awareness of many of the people working in research data management. And that, of course, leads to multiple interpretations and to quite a bit of divergence in approach. So the typical challenges include these uh, uh, diverse approaches and uh, various levels of formality but there are also overlaps between different sets of principles that are all, not always well appreciated. Um, there are uh, probably correctly so multiple evaluation mechanisms and tools for the same criteria, benchmarks and, uh, and uh, best practices. 
And then there's also some semantic ambiguity in respect of the concepts that we are talking about with uh, various uh, interpretations of words such as principles, criteria, metrics, indicators, best practices, standards, and so on. So these are the typical uh, challenges that have emerged over the last several years in this landscape. So we've started work to try and order this landscape a little bit more where we think that um, sets of principles such as trust and fair can be viewed as community expectations that have been formalized to some degree. And then the criteria for realizing these expectations have also been uh, formalized in various ways by uh, uh, efforts such as Core Drasil, Nestor, uh, the ISO um, criteria, GoFair, and so on. And we also have the emergence of tools to evaluate compliance with criteria such as Fuji in the case of the FAIRS FAIR project and focused on FAIR. There are several others and um, all manner of support uh, tools and approaches for evaluation of compliance in, in the field of trust. Now, the community expectations, if one looks a little bit broader at uh, compliance in general, are, would be just one set of motivations uh, on why one would want to measure compliance. And there are others such as complying with legislation or uh, good systems practices or uh, meeting the criteria for uh, joining uh, some club or international network. Uh, we won't be discussing those in detail today, but uh, later on in the RDA breakout sessions on November 10th, there will be an opportunity to explore this a little bit more. Um, so we've started ordering uh, the landscape, as I've said, and uh, broadly categorizing the kinds of things that we deal with into these uh, four big uh, uh, groups, the motivations, the criteria, the elaborations of that criteria. In other words, what does it mean in practice to comply with these criteria? And then what we call implementations, which are really ways of measuring and assessing the level of compliance with these criteria. And that, of course, includes the tools and the rubrics and the uh, uh, sorts of various uh, sets of self-assessment kits that one could find to try and assess compliance. We also need to bear in mind that um, this compliance landscape does not apply only to data, but uh, certainly with the increased emphasis on open science, we expect that it will also have to apply to other research outputs such as semantics, the code, the protocols, and so on that we work with and that we produce as a result of our research. So any kind of compliance framework or approach that we consider also has to be flexible enough to take account of all these other types of research outputs. So we started thinking about the characteristics of a solution. Um, there's quite a number of them, but I want to highlight a few on this first page, the idea of having both precision and flexibility. The flexibility, for instance, is needed in the sense that not all sets of uh, assessments have the same uh, level of granularity for the criteria. And on top of that, many of these sets of criteria um, have sort of parent-child structures, hierarchical structures to them. So to accommodate that kind of uh, varying complexity in the different sets of principles and associated criteria, um, one has to have a, a flexible uh, way of dealing with it. Um, another solution, uh, characteristic of the solution that is quite important would be the relational nature of compliance assessment. And what we mean by that in short is that um, we cannot view the characteristics of an assessment as a property of the digital object or uh, 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 concept that we are evaluating, but rather we should view those properties uh, 
as applying to a relationship between that digital object and some kind of context. And this is important because in different disciplines, we may be faced with different types of evaluations of the same criteria uh, that are context uh, dependent. So it's important for us in our framework to realize that there is this level of complexity in terms of uh, where we should be assigning the properties that we measure. And then the other important factor is that while we are aiming, of course, for maximum automation and machine actionability, uh, ultimately with the tools and assessments of compliance, um, there are criteria for which we won't readily be able to automate the assessment. And so any kind of solution that we come up with has to accommodate humans and uh, some form of subjective measurement uh, uh, with equal um, precision. We've set some goals uh, that is in dance for ourselves to uh, start uh, implementing such a compliance uh, environment where we first develop a conceptual model to provide unambiguous and clear definitions of a whole bunch of things that we've listed there, uh, specifying how we will be encoding it uh, and developing a proof of concept. That proof of concept will have to be able to capture the nodes and relations uh, of our semantics, uh, also capture compliance assessments against that uh, allow of, or provide services whereby we can query compliance status of anything that has been captured and of course it will need a whole set of vocabularies to be able to do so uh, in support of the graph data. We have a number of tests and use cases that I'll elaborate on at the end and then we are hoping of course to engage quite uh, strongly in this working group for validation and refinement of the work that we do there. We have already published a draft of the conceptual model that arranges uh, the concepts that we deal with in compliance uh, assessment and measurement and specification uh, into those four broad groupings of motivations, criteria, elaborations and implementations. Uh, so this is work in progress. And we have started thinking about the specifications of um, a proof of concept that we will work, start work on very shortly. Um, Corpora seal and trust specifically maps onto our conceptual model. It does not provide information on all of the concepts that we have identified to date but you can see that uh, in the highlighted nodes that there is a fairly good correspondence between trust and core trust seals um, efforts and the compliance graph that we are busy uh, const uh, constructing finally our opportunities in dance itself for r d is across uh, different sets of principles we have an opportunity in the fairs fair project to look at how fair can map to this conceptual model and look at how the fuji tool is able to um, to contribute uh, assessments into the graph we will also be working with court seal to do much the same we may have an opportunity if our proposals for funding are accepted uh, to test PID policy compliance within the context of the European Open Science Cloud. And we have also with uh, other collaborators in a European project called Odyssey, uh, a Dutch project in fact called Odyssey, submitted a proposal to look at how we can map fair implementation profiles onto such a compliance framework. So I'm hoping that this sets the scene for uh, a lot of future discussion and refinement of our ideas around the compliance graph. Uh, I have to thank contribution uh, contributors from our working group um, here at RDA that have helped to uh, start refining and improving the ideas that we presented today. Uh, we have received some funding from Fairs Fair for this already. And then I also want to invite you to attend a Birds of a Feather session on the 10th of November, where some of these ideas will be explored uh, further. 
Thank you very much. Yeah, great. Uh, that's a wonderful presentation from Vin there. So we just started talking about, well, hey, we should figure out how these things are related to each other and the fair principles and the care principles and all these things. And uh, it's complicated. It's very complicated. <laughs> so it's great that uh, Don's and Vim have had uh, the opportunity to start already start working on this and have some funding to, to do so, but to figure out how we can all, not just Don's, but other, other international uh, uh, committee groups are, uh, can all agree on, on how to do this and how to make sure things are mapped appropriately are, are great. Um, I do see some questions. I think we can, uh, maybe Vim, you can, can quickly uh, answer these two questions here from, from Maxi Kindling. Uh, and, um, and then we can, we can move on to the other presentations. But questions are, are, are the definitions included in your conceptual model available? I think you said uh, it is, it is, is this publicly accessible as a conceptual model? could make it publicly available? Uh, yes, we can make it publicly available. And yes, the conceptual model is like an ontology of repository assessment. I think that's a good concise description, but of course we want to make it open enough so that it can accommodate all kinds of compliance and not necessarily only trust or only fair. Okay, great, thank you, Ben. I guess it seems like I'm actually satisfied with that answer. So great. Um, if you are, if you're fairly new to, to, to repositories and, and wondering like, well, what, what's the, why do we need to make sure we actually set, uh, have these things related nicely? We're gonna hear from our uh, certification processes, the ones that exist, and you're gonna hear their perspectives on how they see themselves currently uh, related to trust. And uh, the perspectives are very interesting. Um, uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll see that. And I think it'll, it'll also help to illustrate the, the need for this work that, that uh, Ben and Don has already, already begun. So, all right, so now we're gonna switch to, uh, we're gonna hear from, from Mickey Lindlar at Nestor Seal about their certification process and what they see about, how they see themselves currently related to trust. So I'll get that queued up here. Let's see if I can do it better this time. Thank you for the opportunity to introduce Nestor Seal here today. I'm actually presenting Nestor Seal on behalf of my own institution, TIB, the German National Subject Library of Science and Technology. TIB officially endorsed the trust principles, but we're also a cooperation and partner within Nestor, the German Competence Network for Digital Preservation. As part of that cooperation, we're also active in the Nestor Working Group on Certification, the body that signs responsible for the Nestor SEAL certification instrument. And we also maintain a digital archive that in itself is Nestor SEAL certified. We actually have a long-standing history with, with trustworthy digital repository certification, as you can see below. And our goal is to recertify every 1.5 to 2 years, alternating between Core Trust SEAL and Nestor SEAL. So what is Nestor SEAL? Nestor uh, SEAL is a, um, is a certification instrument that has been around since 2012 throughout today. It's maintained by the Nestor Working Group on Certification and it's formulated in the German Dean Standard 31644 Information and Documentation Criteria for Trustworthy Digital Archives. There's also an open access publication of the Criteria Guideline document on the Nestor website. The Nestor SEAL guideline includes 34 criteria um, the certification process costs 500 euros, and there's currently four international institutions that are certified with Nestor SEAL. What does the certification process look like? You self-describe against the 34 criteria. Any answer that you give have, has to be proven either via publicly available documentation or documentation attached in the submission if you have confidentiality requirements. Your submission is then um, blind reviewed by two reviewers. And recertification is not officially required. However, the year awarded is included on the seal that you can display on your website. And the idea is that the seal kind of dates itself then by that. How is Nestor seal used? It's not only used as an official certification instrument, but it's also used as a best practice guideline or point of reference. So if you want to start out with digital preservation and kind of check what best practice is, you can take a look at the guideline document. It's used as a benchmarking instrument to benchmark your own a digital archive or another digital archive that you're looking to deposit materials um, to. 
but it can also be used as a research or study material. The working group actually asked that exact question some in an international survey and is currently evaluating the results of that, so I'm hoping that there will be more information on different usage scenarios in the future. Nestor SEAL guideline documentation is not only available in German, but there are translations into English, Dutch, Hungarian, and Czech available. What then is Nestor SEAL's relationship with TRUST? I actually talked about that at RDA 17, where I gave a presentation on behalf of the Nestor ad hoc working group TRUST. Within that working group, we formulated um, the Nestor SEAL endorsement statement of the TRUST principles. And in that statement, we made some recommendations and identified some benefits. And one of the core recommendations that we made is that trust principles must be linked with established and accepted criteria, and that compliance to trust principles must not be confused with trustworthy digital repository status. Why is that? We feel that the principles, transparency, responsibility, user focus, sustainability, and technology are covered throughout the entire Nestor SEAL guideline. But it's covered alongside other central aspects such as preservation planning and suitable preservation strategies and those core elements of digital preservation are currently not explicitly mentioned in the trust principles. So that leads us to the statement that Nestor SEAL is not an implementation of trust, but rather trust is a low threshold entry point to trust SEAL and all other trustworthy digital repository certificates. Based on that, we can then talk about initial thoughts on a mapping between Nestor SEAL and trust. Like I said, um, transparency, responsibility, user focus, and sustainability, especially those four principles, are core aspects of the entire criteria catalog. Technology could be mapped to two criteria in specific if you would want to. However, the question is, um, what would that concrete mapping achieve? Because we feel that Nestor SEAL can exemplify trust, but that it goes far beyond what trust conveys. What does that look like in detail? If we look at one of the criteria, um, for example, criteria three on designated community, that criteria in itself covers several of the trust principles. There's um, user focus by the mere definition of the designated community. It's what it's all about. Sustainability, because we need to monitor our designated community as it changes over time and adapt processes implement in, implemented in the digital archive accordingly. And transparency, because everything needs to be publicly documented and available. If you want to see an example of compliance, I've linked below here the documentation that TIB used to, um, to, to prove how we comply to the designated community requirement. Um, it's formulated in our preservation policy as well as in our publicly available documentation for significant property definition. I've also linked to our Nestor SEAL report. K3 covers um, designated communities. That's only available in German, unfortunately. So there's also a link to the core trust seal audit report in English that also has some questions about designated community. Thank you. All right, yeah, so you hear from the from our from Mickey from our Nestor representative, but trust is not necessarily all there. The, the, the principles are the Nestor seal does more. It says that it does more than the than the trust principles exemplify. So uh, one interesting relationship of, of how the two are related. Um, okay, so we're going to move to hear from uh, David Giarretta, who represents the ISO uh, 16363 standard for trustworthy digital repositories. We'll hear, hear their perspective on how the trust principles are related. Let's give me a second here. Hello, my name is David Giretta. I want to talk briefly about uh, what lessons might be learned uh, from ISO 16363, the trust principles, if one wants to make them uh, the basis for some sort of audit. The basis of 16363 is, I, th I think, clarity. It's based on OEIS, clear definitions, uh, very clear focus. But at the same time, recognizing that it can't specify everything to the ultimate level of detail, we must structure it in a way to limit the effect of the variations in, in judgment. Uh, and of course, it's not limited 
uh, by the need to meet an acronym, whereas trust principles at the moment, loose terminology, not enough details, not written for audit, and of course it is limited by the need to fit the acronym. Um, who can audit? Well, uh, their standards um, in ISO have related standards uh, with names like requirement for auditors. Um, 16363 has 16919, uh, 17021, uh, the security one has 19896, um, the uh, archive one does not have any. Um, at the moment, archive principles, no requirements document for, uh, for audit. Uh, the structure of 16363, it's a hierarchy to force auditors to look at more and more specific details in areas that we thought were uh, where it was required. So the hierarchy is uh, like this. Um, as we go down, we get increasing numbers of metrics and um, increasing levels of detail all the way down here. What we have for the trust principles, no structure. That would. Uh, we chose ISA. Why? Uh, because ISA audits uh, underpin a lot of the um, of our lives, um, and in particular, the ISA audit process uh, is designed to ensure this consistency of audits and international recognition. And the basis of this is everyone and everything is tested, evaluated every year. Evaluating, well, uh, we have 16919 lists the competencies required of the auditors. The, uh, the process of auditing follows at specified in 17021, which is used as the basis for the ISO uh, uh, audit process. It's got two stages, identifies non-conformity, and the point is it's part of a process of continuous improvement. And of course, in our case, the criteria used are 16363. So trust principles would need audit procedures, need to be restructured, and so forth. Okay, so that's from our ISO 16363 representative, uh, Aran, that uh, you know, the trust principles just don't go far enough in being specific. And uh, yeah, certainly a, not one of the trends. I don't think the trust principles authors, of which I'm like the 15th of 20, so I'm not a big spokesperson for this group, but uh, not trying to be, a, not trying to replace certification processes that exist uh, in, any, in any stretch. Um, but certainly a concern and a rel uh, in the relationship between things that already exist and these newer trust principles. Okay, so now we're going to hear from our core trust seal representative, who's actually going to give a live presentation here, as opposed to me switching from recording to recording. Uh, Marie, right, is going to, uh, to to talk us through. I'm going to run the slides though, which you can just tell me next slide as I go. So let me switch again. Okay, share screen. Okay, Marie, if you can see the slides, you can take it away. Yes, thank you, John. Uh, so hello, everybody. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my name is Marie Klemola. I'm, I'm from the Finnish Social Science Data Archive, Tampere University, and I'm the core trust seal board secretary. Uh, and I have, I, I think, seven slides, uh, which is quite a lot for a five-minute presentation. So I'm, I'm going to jump around a little bit. Uh, so next slide, please. So, so uh, I, I think we are all building trust, and we are all building trust to support open science. So that's common for all the initiatives we've heard and all the acronyms and uh, uh, all, all for all of us here today. Uh, 
Core Trust Seal, I, I think it's a very well established. I believe you know it. Uh, so it's a not-for-profit, it's community-based. Um, I, I think we have uh, 114 uh, certified repositories at the moment and more on the pipeline. So it's uh, well accepted. Although, as Dawei mentioned, there are probably thousands of repositories. So there's still work to do. Uh, the certification is valid for three years. It's, uh, it's a peer review process. We have two reviewers for uh, each of the application. Uh, it's, uh, we have 16 requirements. Um, so next uh, slide, please. And these are grouped into three teams, uh, organizational, digital object management, and technology. I think this look pretty familiar to, to, uh, to this audience. Uh, and uh, I, I will mention here that the Cotra steel requirements will be reviewed uh, next year. And so this might change a little bit. I, I think the basics will still be the same because this is based on OAIS uh, and, and that's not going to change. So the objective is to enable repositories to safeguard data for the long term and to ensure high quality of repositories. Um, Next slide, please. So this is just a very, very quick overview of, uh, of the review process that we have. Uh, so as I mentioned, we have two reviewers uh, taken from the assembly of reviewers. And the assembly of reviewers consists of people from repositories that have been certified. So this is very much a community effort. Uh, when you get the slides, you can click the links and see more information. I, I, I think we need to move forward. So next slide, please. So when thinking of uh, trust principles, uh, so from core trust seal perspective, trust principles are just that. They are principles. They are high level guiding principles. Uh, uh, they can be used to facilitate discussion as we are doing today and they can be used to map across different uh, criteria so that we can bring the criteria together and avoid perhaps some overlap. Uh, we can create synergy. So trust our principles and core trust seal requirements uh, is an assessment system. And uh, core trust seal provides core level uh, trust for the digital repository certification. So, so Core Trust Seal is the entry level, uh, and uh, I, I think that's that's also uh, why we see this uh, uh, good uptake of this certification. Uh, but the entry level doesn't mean easy necessary. So, and there are a lot of questions, and one of the big questions at the moment is. Uh, what, what kind of repositories, which repositories are in the scope of Core Trust Seal? And I think there was discussion on that in the chat already. Um, Core Trust Seal has endorsed the trust principles. And I, I think this is only natural. Uh, trust principles were written by people with uh, many of them had background in Core Trust Seal. Uh, so I, I think um, we talk a lot about fair data and FAIR metadata, and FAIR is an excellent goal, but once, once we add time into that equation, we will end up with trust principles. So, and, and as we know, uh, TDRs add value by enabling this fairness uh, over time. Uh, so I, there was actually a, a paper by, uh, produced in the Shock and Fair's FAIR and EOS Nordic projects, uh, called preservation for designated community. I think uh, we managed to explore this issue pretty well there. So I, I will add a link in the chat. So next slide, please. Uh, I, I wanted to highlight some of the things from trust and cultural seals. So the things that really strike to me as the most important things uh, in, in in both trust principles, in core trust seal, and of course, there are a lot of other things that are important, a lot of other issues. Uh, but these are highlighted here in yellow. And uh, I mean, one of the main things is evidence. So you need to back your, uh, your statements with evidence, and that evidence should be public and transparent. And this is also something that goes 
quadra seal so all our requirements uh, the extended guidance and all granted certification are openly available and I, I think this is good community building material uh, for all repositories. Uh, another big thing is the responsibility so this is one of the things that is um, almost impossible almost uh, to outsource so you can outsource a lot of functions but responsibility that's uh, probably something you can't uh, that's up to discussion of course or up to de debate so uh, we are community based for trust seal and the users are in the focus for trust principles as well uh, sustainability wise for trust seal is a, a, a non-profit in, in so I think, uh, and, and when it comes to technology, um, this is not the, the, the main uh, expertise area of Quadra Seal, uh, but uh, infrastructure, I think, is the word here. So an infrastructure is more than technology. So that's also people and knowledge and so on. So Quadra Seal itself, I think, fits very nicely uh, within trust principles, but of course, all the requirements also fit. And I mean, there's a, a mapping by Vim, uh, and I guess there are more recent versions, but there's one very nice in, in one of, uh, in his slides it's from 2020. Uh, I will end by saying uh, that this, when I look at these highlighted words, I now realize that if I, uh, uh, when I take the, the first, uh, uh, letters, so E, R, omitting the T, uh, taking the U, and L and I, uh, that forms a Finnish word called uh, reilu, and which, which translates into fair. So I think this, is, this must be an omen of some kind. Uh, so with that, uh, thank you for your attention, uh, and I'm happy to have any questions. Great, great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Uh, I like that. Uh, this, uh, we have another way to spell fair. I like it very much. <laughs> um, so I should note, uh, we, we said, I think that we shared earlier, uh, we'll, we'll make all these slides and recordings available uh, in the near future. Um, uh, certainly make them available through the, through the RDA website. Uh, typically we do. I'll see how fast we can share them. Uh, it takes a little time to get things uploaded and whatnot. But would have a, uh, if you join the interest group, you'll get informed uh, when this stuff is uploaded. Um, we can make it available as soon as we can. So at that, what I'll say is for now, uh, for a couple of minutes, if you like, are there particular questions around the certification processes or around what we've heard so far uh, that would be useful to, to discuss at this point and uh, give a little time for that discussion? Uh, around the presentations, clarification questions, like uh, one Max he already answered, uh, asked. So open the floor at least for that. And then if, if you know, when we have gone through that, if we're short, we'll move into discussion of the uh, concepts of the working group and I'll let, I'll let Dawei take that away. So questions, uh, questions at this point? No time here. I see a hand from, from uh, Bob. So Bob, yes, please. Yes. I, I... Thank you very much, John. Uh, I, th I think one of the themes that we're, we're noticing uh, through all of these uh, presentations is uh, the uh, a, a discussion of the consistency of reviews, that is consistency of reviews uh, that are being conducted by different reviewers. Uh, uh, um, and metrics as as well. For instance, uh, it was mentioned that you know there are many different ways of measuring fair. Uh, uh, for example, um, uh, David Giaretta mentioned that the uh, uh, reviewers for ISO one six three six three have to comply with uh, or be a, uh, uh, meet the requirements for uh, ISO 16919. And um, uh, those are a couple exa of, uh, of examples. And I'm, I'm just wondering uh, how, as a community, we might try
try to address these kinds of issues uh, with all of the, the standards, uh, in, including core uh, trust seal and, and trust, which is really more of principles, but uh, I think the points were made that uh, uh, you, know, you, you have to be able to have a way to uh, at least evaluate these things or uh, they might not uh, necessarily have uh, uh, a shared meaning. So any thoughts on that? Uh, would be certainly uh, interesting. I, I just give my quick my quick view on this, like Bob. I think you're it's very much you're 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 outlining the, the issue at hand. I mean, really much to, to me when I hear this. I hear what what Mickey Lindlar said and and what David Giretta said. Like, how do we? How do we talk about these things and then talk about this high level principles framework that has its maybe place and the com communication to to policymakers and to other people who are new to you know, concepts of trustworthy repositories, but that's not the be all end all of, of, of how we determine that things are trustworthy. So how do we do this in a way that doesn't uh, doesn't create trouble and confusion for all of us as we go forward and try and create this wonderful trustworthy repository system? Does anyone else have any? Any input they like to share on Bob's comment? A couple of people. Um, Vim, Vim beat Ari by just a second. So we'll have Vim talk first and then Ari will be next. I just want to quickly say that I think we also have to be realistic and one can aim towards uh, more repeatability and objective assessment of many of these metrics but we're going to have to live with ambiguity for quite some time. Uh, many of the criteria cannot be evaluated except subjectively and on some agreed scale by humans. And of course, um, it will take a lot of time before um, parallel or overlapping methods of assessment start to converge, if ever. So that's why in a compliance graph, we want to make it possible for people to see multiple evaluations of the same criteria using different methods and make up their own minds. Okay, great, all right, please. Yeah, actually about, about that one, uh, one, one of the things what's come, I'm from environmental infrastructure side in Europe. And one of the issues there is, uh, is also about how to communicate these kind of things that, that certain certificates have been passed and certain values have been passed uh, in machine to machine environment. Meaning that we, what we are looking for really is virtual research environments and where you could combine sources from different repositories together. So there this knowledge of, of what kind of, what these certificates actually certify would be very uh, good to have in a, in a digital format. And I'm not completely sure, did I understand correctly that is this already possible in any of these models uh, or, or are, they, are they encoded anywhere? A, a second point, which I just, I don't know if it's very relevant for this discussion, but I, I just think that, I mean, these all these certificates and principles are excellent kind of policy level analysis, but is there any interest towards developing probably more discipline specific, of course, uh, really, um, I, I understand it goes much more in the technologies than, than just policies, but really something which would guarantee some level of interoperability between the RIs. I'm just asking this because this is something what we are trying to do in, in my own, own infrastructure cluster, but uh, I'm thinking that how could these kind of things could ever, do you th see this, that there could be a process how to create some level of certifications for this perhaps more domain specific issues. Okay, great. I, it's, uh, it sounds like uh, Vim's got a response. Uh, Marie, uh, can I can let you let Vim quick respond and then let you talk or is, are, you on, are you on the same topic? Uh, no, just to say Ari that um, together with read read data, the core CTS certification will be, become part of their API. So at least from a repository point of view, you'd be able to query the certifi CTS certification status via RE3 data already in the near future. 
Okay, uh, Marie, please. Yes, I, I completely agree that we need more interoperability and more machine actionability uh, with all these certifications. And I, I think that will be one of the goals when we revise Cotra seal requirements next year, but that's also, of course, up to the community. Um, I, I think this also goes back to transparency. So we need to know what's going on, who has been accepted, what was the criteria and what was the result. Okay, great. Uh, Dava, please. Yeah, I'll just follow up to answer uh, uh, Iris, uh Request. I, th I think the uh, I just, and there's good also a point to distinguish uh, the trust and the and then also what the user wants. So the interoperability is what the what the users want. What the, what is the they think about how the data can be useful for them, and uh, so trust is not necessarily required the repository to uh, implement uh, 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 interoperability. Instead, the trust will only focus on uh, that the repository should satisfy the user's need. So if user need interoperability, then uh, the repository should provide that. But it, like for, some, for example, there may be some, um, some history archive that may not be uh, appropriate for interoperability, for example, right? And then the repository should, should uh, order honor that request as well. So I, I think I would just want to kind of distinguish that you know the the trust is trying to focus on the responsibilities for uh, repository, and then the user will request what they want from the repository, and which is uh, a lot of time is like you know the fair principle is, is specified by that. Okay, uh, well, that way, since you're already talking, I might say that if you want to talk a little bit more, start to move our discussion slightly towards talking about, well, should we get something together to talk more about this at the RDA level, get all these international stakeholders together to talk about how are these things related? Want to move our discussion in that direction a little bit? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanks, thanks, John. And, and I, I think uh, is, yeah, it is a great way to think about uh, what what is the next step for uh, for trust and also the the certifications and I, I think based on the uh, the presentation so far I, I the, I the theme is that uh, people are thinking uh, trust that cover a lot of important areas that uh, the people want uh, the trust uh, worthy repository to have. But also there's the, the, the challenges. I mentioned some in my presentation, uh, but I heard a lot, a lot of more that uh, like the trust may, uh, may not cover all the areas that the certification area uh, like to cover uh, in a sense that uh, the certifications are, uh, uh, are doing more than the trust required. And also there was a interpretation, you know, what, what, what does each letter mean? Um, so, um, so the, the, the trend that we have been seeing is that uh, the policymakers, the funders, they like to stick at, uh, uh, at the repository, at the principal level. Like they, they, they want their uh, stakeholders or researchers to uh, compliance with the trust principles. But most of them are now willing to specify this uh, the implementation they require, uh, like you know, like say uh, to uh, have a repository the uh, for funding and uh, which certification standard that you should have. Uh, that's what the the funders would uh, normally don't like to do. Um, but I think as a community, probably we need to think about like you know what what is the steps that we need to have uh, to uh, take advantage of the trust principle is, uh, is a, a community consensus right now. And how do we use that consensus to help uh, the implementations? And then the one uh, idea I think that uh, I want to uh, talk about is, is that, uh, is, is that the, um, uh, the topic generates enough interest 
that, uh, that we need a working group to uh, work out some details and to uh, resolve some, uh, some competing or overlap uh, definitions. And then, then we can uh, using trust to move the field into uh, the way that, um, that we have a, a trustworthy repository called Trusted. So, so the question is really that, you know, what, what is the interest and what is, uh, does it take to, um, to implement uh, trust? Comments from the from the from from our attendees. I just see one. I just see one uh, one comment from from Bonnie Carroll from uh, World Data Systems. Oh well, uh, I'm noting it would be good to have our funders involved in this discussion about what you just discussed. Uh, Walmart, please. Uh, maybe a bit unrelated, but I mean, in in general, it would be nice if it was easy to to. Uh, sort of create uh, maybe not a formal repository with, with all the components of the infrastructure, but uh, focusing on the designated community uh, and uh, kind of the uh, uh, exchange, so to speak, like uh, depositing and getting data out of, of this uh, kind of community entrance. So uh, maybe having the trust uh, components um, dispersed over infrastructure that is kind of backing uh, the front end. Um, uh, and I discussed with some colleagues uh, quite a while back and it didn't really turn into fruition, but uh, having a more generic uh, infrastructure supporting data storage uh, and kind of some, some general structure for, for the containing the the data, but that infrastructure usually don't support uh, content migration and, and curation to the level that it would fulfill the trust principles. So then uh, maybe uh, by having kind of an interface uh, in front of that uh, backing infrastructure, you could actually achieve the trust principles. Uh, and I imagine that uh, it would be interesting for, uh, I mean, research groups or uh, research um, uh, communities to kind of form these uh, clusters of, of curation that maybe could realize something to the level of the trust principles. And it would be uh, nice to see some case studies on people doing that and like with small means achieving trust and not having like the entire set of infrastructure and maintaining servers and things like that on their own. I have a comment, but I'll let Jim talk first. <laughs> Please go ahead, Jim. Yeah, thanks. So this is interesting because, um, of course, the, the consequence of federation and automation is that all kinds of bits and pieces of the curation workflow might in future be farmed out to services that are not necessarily part of a monolithic repository as we know it. And that includes curation tasks because already for scholarly publication, the quality assurance by way of peer review is effectively crowdsourced in a way by asking people to review papers prior to publication. And they are not part of what the, public, what the publisher, uh, the resources that they have in-house, but they are part of the community. So I think it is a discussion for the future to understand how trust works in a distributed uh, atomic uh, automated environment that is very different from what we have today. But I think it's too early to, to worry about it too much because it will take quite a bit of time in my view to get there. I'll, I'll just quick point out the following, following what you said in Walmart, which said uh, a couple of a couple of sessions ago in our for other editors group, uh, and, and uh, Maria actually already mentioned this in the chat. Um, we we had some discussion. The Court Trustee Board has had some discussion about how to address they call them technical service providers. 
So one, yeah, uh, groups that are providing some of these some of these uh, services towards trustworthy repositories, but not all of them. And it was a question, and I, I don't know where those conversations ended up, but this was something that has come up. It's in the course of CL, I'm aware. And and what to do? And like, yeah, there's no reason that there you should have a thousand repositories all necessarily developing all their separate infrastructure. Not necessarily. There might be some reasons for that, but it would be kind of duplicative. So yeah. I, this I think this is an important point of discussion, and it, ha it has been, it has been as well. Uh, Dawi. Yeah, I want to add a little bit more comments on uh, the Walmart's uh, uh, the, um, the the question about the uh, the infrastructure. I, I think the the uh, for trust principle is uh, purposely be general uh, because the infrastructure requirements is different. Uh, for different domains, and what does that mean? Like they satisfy the trust principle or not? Uh, is is uh, is up to that particular community. Uh, but I, I I think what what I want to uh, mention is that I think that would be a good case for the people to come together. Like say we have all these different ways of implement trust for infrastructure, and if we have enough of those cases maybe that some theme will emerge. And then that can be the, uh, the specific guidelines for people say, if you wanna implement the trust principle and this is the level you have to be at. So uh, I'm wondering if that is, can be a, a thread we can follow to, to see if, you know, like the gradually like moving people to, you know, to make the, the report is more and more trustworthy. Other comments or ideas on how what how we why what other things we should consider in moving this work forward. Uh, maybe a, another question I want to throw up there uh, to see if uh, uh, anybody have a thought on it is that uh, uh, the. Uh, the certification standard are, uh, you know, some people think that it is implementation of trust. Like once you have a, a like certification, it's easy to say to founders uh, or uh, uh, other policymakers that you know we compliance with the trust principles, and uh, and then also uh, mentioned in uh, Mickey's presentation that. Uh, the standards may not think uh, the they are the implementations of trust. So, um, so what do they, what do they, what do people think? Like, you know, is that uh, is that kind of the a goal that um, is not a goal? Is is the approach that that people, if you can get the the certification, then you automatically satisfy. Uh, the compliance to trust principle like what how people think about the relationship between the, the certifications and and trust uh we might i saw your hands up do, do you want to give uh your thought <laughs> yeah no i was gonna say that you know uh, we have a, an open invitation of course and hopefully this can happen within rda in a working group but if not then also uh, you know uh, outside of rda uh, in collaboration with us to to try and develop this idea of a compliance graph and the supporting vocabularies or ontology so that one can at least move towards a framework that is less divergent and tries to consolidate all of the different approaches that we see at the current point in time uh, from a conceptual point of view and give uh, implementation guidelines for people building infrastructure to support uh, compliance assessment and measurement and uh, reporting. Mm -hmm. Uh, Bob? 
uh, yeah, I, I think those are, are great points and it would be fantastic to see a bit more convergence amongst all these different uh, um, metrics and, and, and principles. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I think we have to keep in mind that uh, the repositories are quite diverse as well. And uh, you know, there's uh, not only different disciplines being represented amongst the, the repositories that are, are seeking to improve, but also uh, different levels of resources amongst them. Um, you know, uh, we, we can uh, uh, look at some repositories that uh, have uh, lots of, of resources and uh, uh, might be actually serving a very small designated community. And, and so they might have ample resources in that regard. And then we can look at other repositories that are, are serving very broad communities, uh, perhaps even across disciplines uh, internationally and uh, have very limited re resources. And, and so, you know, from uh, the perspective of, uh, of uh, what is being done for society uh, it, it, uh, and, and to further science, it might be some of these smaller repositories that are doing more with less uh, that uh, are really performing in a, in a laudable manner. And I think we have to make sure we're not uh, leaving them by the wayside in our efforts to converge all of the different uh, uh, types of uh, requirements. Yeah, I, th I think a great point, uh, Bob. I, th I think the, uh, the trust principles are trying to include, trying to be inclusive. And, uh, and the, uh, is, there's a lot of actually, uh, there's a couple of uh, generous repository uh, endorse uh, trust, and then they they uh, signal that the desire they want to be uh, like trustworthy for the user uh, community they're serving, and uh, is not necessarily falling to the uh, certification uh, the the method existed. But I think it would be good to to use trust to uh, to build a little bit more. Uh, Details that that's how uh, how people can uh, define the um, the well operated repositories to to serve their need. So I see um, Maria has put in a little first thing. Great, it's noted. You know, I'll give the plus one to Bob for saying inclusiveness is really important here. And I I totally agree. Uh, Marie mentioning about the importance of economics of scale and providing these services, and that um, you know, some 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 places, some some repositories have you know uh, have ability to to use this economies of scale to get their services done, get services out, and uh, it depends a lot on, on many different things. And uh, yeah, I agree. We, have, we actually had a presentation, uh, we actually had a presentation last week, or last session, it's not last week, last session from our repository in, based in Serbia on psychological uh, instruments, survey instruments in psychology. And they're using the open science framework as their repository base because that's the resources they have available to provide access to their data. And looked at how well they were, looked at how well they were uh, you know, following the trust principles and uh, that's what they can do at this time with the resources they have available. Is that something we should, you know, we, we would like to everyone to have all the resources necessary and available, but sometimes we have to pull them towards, towards what work we can do. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for that comment. <clears throat> Other comments? Yeah, I think, John, I, I think that 
it, it remind me another uh, set of discussions at the uh, NIH uh, workshop on um, improving the fairness and trustworthiness of uh, repository as well as standardized metrics. And, and during those discussions, uh, it was interesting that uh, if you ask repositories that are you ready to support the the policy implementations and 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 people will say yeah I do <laughs> and uh, but 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 in a sense is that the the different people have different understanding that you know what what does it mean transparent and, and how much how much evidence the the put out into the public domain constitute the transparent. I, I think that uh, probably needs some, a little bit more uh, discussions and a little bit more examples that, uh, that what, what, does, what does each community uh, require to, um, to make their user think they're transparent enough. So I'm wondering if, if there's, um, if there's the uh, like the uh, the people in the audience that have the experience that that, that you know like maybe even they like say how how do they comply the, the fair principles? Yeah, I, so I I saw yeah I thought yeah yeah we wanted yeah we wanted to talk yeah so I I think we may not want to discuss it in much detail here because it is a big discussion but um, the the it's likely that the economy of scale for bits and pieces of what composes a trusted repository the different economies of scale are not the same. It may be best to use infrastructure services at the scale of the EOSP, the European Open Science Cloud, together with some parts of what is now uh, the job of the trustworthy repository. Now we can certify that repository because they take responsibility for all their outsources. The sticking point is that each repository using something like a service from EOSP doesn't want to recertify that component that they are using. The, the ideal situation is that these constituent parts can be certified separately and be referenced by someone seeking certification. Because that kind of uh, dis disconnection between the, mm. the uh, certified uh, entity and the bits and pieces that they use to provide their service with I think leads to a lot of duplication, especially when we start uh, using these shared services in future. Mm -hmm. I, as we're getting near, we got 10 minutes left as we're nearing the end. I, I, so we are, this, this purchase group is also sponsored by World Data Systems. Uh, so uh, we have our current interim, interim director here, Bonnie Carroll, and I thought we'd just give her a quick second to give some give some thoughts about how WDS thinks about uh, this work, and uh, and maybe a little segue towards next week's session as well, if you'd like. Bonnie. Thank you, thank you, John. Um, this has been a really fascinating um, session with a lot of questions that have been raised on a lot of dimensions of this whole thing. And um, I guess it's, we're at the early stages of all these conversations. From the point of view of, of WDS, as most of you do know, in order to be a member of WDS, you have to be certified by the core trust seal. We've had a number of comments about that, particularly and I, um, organizations that are not disciplinary oriented, that are more general. We've had comments about uh, organizations that are smaller and don't have the resources to go through the processes and things like that. So a lot of the things that were brought up um, here are things that WDS, as the representation of a number of, of scientific data centers, wants to take up. We were also greatly influenced by Vim, who brought up a lot of his thoughts about the, the care 
adding care and adding um, other things to the cross core trust seal. Um, care not only being representation of um, indigenous peoples, but also of representing the concept of all these ethical values that now have to be put in that really aren't in solid in a lot of these these things. So I would say um, we can pick up wherever, please come on the 10th. The time is about the same time, but given the time zone changes that take place this weekend, um, uh, I think it's um, 1400 um, uh, UTC. So whatever you, you translate your UTC, please do come and continue the conversation. We will be hearing from uh, some of the same perspectives, but we'll be hearing more. We'll be hearing from um, um, the FAIR people, how they see their role in all of this. Today, we heard from the ISO people. So we keep adding. Um, one of the things that I've noticed today is hearing from Nestor, which I was not familiar with, and I made the comment that there are a lot of national systems in addition to these international. In the United States, I observe, we have some mission or disciplinary um, oriented systems like um, in the Department of Energy, they have a system and you have to go through certain check marks and checklists to be put up there as their concept of, are you trustworthy, are you quality? The term quality versus trustworthy comes into play. I, I'm sure that the NIH also has something Daiwa, Daiwa, that, um, that you're working on as well. So um, I just hope that many of you will rejoin us on the 10th as a continuation and see how we can get these two um, interests together and, and move forward together on all of this. Mm -hmm. David, David Castle is the chairman of our scientific committee. I don't know if he wanted to add something. Um, Just to add that I hope everybody shows up on the, on the 10th to continue the discussion. Um, but I was also just um, uh, considering the fact that, you know, an organization like WDS and there are, there are other organizations uh, representing uh, members who are data stewards and shepherding repositories and, and so forth, um, have, a, have a perspective to bring to the table in the conversation about the frameworks, the standards, and the interoperability uh, of all of these different uh, schemas that, that uh, certify and assure uh, funders, policymakers, the international community that we're we're not only abiding by the best possible standards, but we're evolving them together. So I'm looking forward to continuing that aspect of the conversation on the 10th. And personally, I just want to thank everybody for a really intriguing session this morning. Yeah, and one interesting point that Vim assured me he would be interested in taking up on the 10th is the issue of trust in the repository versus of the data in the repository the quality of the data. You can go and get your repository checked off and some of the, the data in it needs to be looked at as well. And I've heard this from um, some repositories as well. So, so there are a lot of wonderful, interesting questions. And I'm, I'm hoping with Vim's very analytical view, he will help us create a network that ties a lot of these things together. Vim, the pressure's on. I was just going to say, I'm not going to sleep for the next week, but uh, yeah. You never sleep anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I, I think, uh, Bonnie, I think that thanks for the, uh, the, uh, the heads up for the session, and, and I'm looking forward to it as well. And I, I, I also want to add it, I, I think the, um, when, when like a group of people develop a trust principle, they also get, uh, uh, have that in mind, and there, there is a lot of, our repositories may not be up to the certification level, or may not be like you know, be the part like a member of WDS, which is which is fine. Uh, but but I think uh, just like I think uh, uh, I think like WDS and like at NIH, because the uh, the technology is developed so fast, and you don't know like you know what what a data type are going to exist tomorrow. You know what. How people are going to reuse them for uh, for new things, and so um, I, I think that uh, the trust principle is to uh, play a role in the sense, like the, if you're not uh, you have not done a repository before, this is some lesson people already learn, and then follow them through. And if you grow uh, big enough, and then you may want to get certified 
and get more, uh, you know, the support and be a member of society and then to share your experiences with uh, the new, new uh, repository. I, I, I thought that would be uh, a good maybe discussion point and, and welcome the people who are not like even have a repository now, but, uh, but, but are passionate about the data and then, you know, the preserve for the long-term use to, to participate the, the session. Yeah, and, and WDS is looking at the future. Is it that we must have core trust seal certification to be a member of the community? So all of these things are really being questioned as we, we look at the new demands on data center managers and everything um, in the future. And we do have our international technology office. Actually, um, there's some funding that that they're associated with to try and get some data repositories who are young and, and beginning to be up to the standards so that they can be certified. So um, the mentoring and things like that, as you, you know, is also very mm. important. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. Lots of comments, I don't know. <laughs> So I see, I see Nina here mentioning uh, regarding data quality assurance for and by repository operators. There's a, there'll be a poster regarding this very topic available uh, available at the appropriate time. So that sounds that's uh, great. Um, thanks very much for sharing that. Nina. So maybe none of us will be sleeping for the next few weeks. <laughs> Always so much going on, and all so many interesting interesting aspects of these discussions for sure. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. Um, yeah, well, two more minutes. Anyone have a last comment? That way you have anything you want to say at the end here before we all sign off and then try and we'll continue these discussions next week. Yeah, no, I think that I, I really enjoyed the discussions and uh, and also there seems a lot of directions going on and uh, and there was a lot of work need to be done. <laughs> so we, we, we do not, uh, we cannot sleep. <laughs> And, uh, and I just want to have a reminder, like if the uh, participant has not put their name into the doc and uh, feel free to put there and uh, we will share uh, the, uh, the slides and recordings uh, in the coming days, I uh, hope, and, uh, and continue the discussions and uh, in this uh, interested group of RDA. And also we welcome people to, um, to join the interested group and uh, to, uh, to continue the discussion, not just about trust certifications, but also uh, the related issues. Agreed. Please do join. We, we're just trying to get towards the trustworthy repository ecosystem. That's all we want. Uh, actually, uh, uh, John, I, I, I want to also mention that uh, the uh, we also want to uh, welcome the uh, any members want to be a co-chair for this uh, interest group. And uh, we ha uh, normally have four uh, chairs and there is some chairs like the uh, have some capacity cannot uh, from work cannot participate. I, and uh, if you are interested in, uh, you know, working with us, uh, John and, uh, and myself, uh, please reach out to us. Yes, please do. We'll be happy to, happy to have more interested and, and enthusiastic people to help guide help our lead our, our discussions. Mm -hmm. All right, it's 11.30, so it's, uh, it's time for us to wrap up. Thank you very much for joining us. I hope you found the discussion illuminating and interesting as we did, and we'll look forward to continuing the discussions here at RDA and online in general. All right, so everybody have a good rest okay, of your day. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye.